and um, thank you, Mr. Marple, for your, your reference back to um, uh, Parkersburg and Vienna, West Virginia. Uh, that's my district, and uh, three years ago, we spent a great deal of time trying to address this issue and figure out what how we might be able to resolve it. And, and one of the, the resolutions there was uh, the activated carbon filters, um, and, and that worked. But it opened up in this whole educational process that we learned three years ago, uh, opened up more questions. And so I may be at odds with my party, but I'm also I'm, I'm at odds with this whole issue, trying to understand it as an engineer. I'm, I'm one of just two licensed professional engineers in Congress. Uh, so I, because I, what I look at the, on this, um, one thing we learned was 80% of our exposure to PFAS is 80% of it is not water. It's from the food we eat. Uh, the CDC came out with a, uh, their, their report said uh, drinking water, ingesting food uh, from fish and shellfish, uh, packaged food, packaged products, hand to mouth, primarily with carpeting. So you can get that from carpeting. The, the dust and the filter on, uh, with that, and just working in a plant. So we've got, we've got other than just water we should be addressing. Okay, now with that, the Geneva, uh, they just had a conference in Geneva last two weeks ago. Oddly, because what I'm concerned about is the imports. We can, we can take a, an action in America and deal with it, but until there's a global consciousness of this and we're importing, we're still going to have this exposure to it. And what they did in the, just two weeks ago in Geneva, they exempted all the products we're worried about. They're, they exempted firefighting foam. They exempted implantable medical devices, fluorinated polymers. That's our Teflon. Uh, they exempted plastic accessories for car interior parts. And they exempted manufacturing electric wires. Uh, I, I'm just saying, folks, we, we can we can chase this rabbit about water, but there are a lot more problems associated. There, we're not going to be addressing that, especially because we're part of a global community and we're going to be importing things that come in that are going to be contaminated and continue to do this. So I, I'm uh, uh, I'm I'm concerned about how we're going to protect ourselves from being exposed in the future in other than water. So Mr. Meehan, can you explain or, or give me a little bit of guidance here on how we might address this if, the, if globally there's not a ban on Teflon? Well, I, I think you raise a very good point. Uh, uh, and, I, and I must say, I think the general view that the committee's taken, and, and I think Eric's test, uh, written comments, this is a, a multimedia problem. It is a multi-dimensional problem. A global comprehensive approach makes sense. I mean, looking at Superfund, Tosca, as I mentioned in my remarks, uh, and, and you know, we'll look at MCLs and things like that through the process under the Safe Drinking Water Act. So yeah, I, uh, we certainly view ourselves uh, as at the receiving end of this problem as utilities, and certainly our customers feel the same way. So yes, uh, I think everything should be on the table and looked at it in terms of what makes sense and is reasonable in terms of reducing risk across the whole spectrum. Yeah, they, uh, they even the went to, uh, to China and, and, and the European Union mm -hmm. have asked for exemptions to the whole ban. So I'm just curious, as yeah, long I, as we're going to be importing products coming in, especially food products from the uh, European Union and, and carpeting, because that's where our, our toddlers, that's where they're going to get exposed to it. I think we have, let's, I, we need to slow this train down just a little bit, do a better analysis of how we might approach this globally and we and push back. But apparently we lost the fight at, at Stockholm and G Geneva, and we're allowing these products to be manufactured and, and shipped to us. Yeah, maybe we can't make it, but other people can, and they come in, and our children, your children, your grandchildren are going to be exposed to something, not because of an American manufacturer, but because of a European Union manufacturer or a Chinese manufacturer. I think we better, I, I, I'd like maybe lecture, you, you explain, is there a way that we can approach this from a global perspective? Well, uh, 
you're getting into issues of international environmental law and trade policy, and, how, and I certainly am not an expert in that. I know you'll hear a lot of talk from Europeans about the precautionary principle and reverse burden, and then they make exceptions. They don't have a, t a tort uh, law regime like we do. So I think we need to keep our wits about us and, and do what it takes to protect our, our environment, our public health, and our people. And uh, I think you're onto something there looking at the international dimension of the problem. Thank you. Yield back my time.